by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, presents The Lone Ranger. Speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! And is she good? She'd skip rough camp of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios. The cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats. The good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say... She's feeling her Cheerios. <laughs> When Army Major John Hay left Washington to start his secret mission into the West, he believed that only a few trusted officers knew of his assignment. But Gregory's servant to the government official who had outlined the purpose of the journey and the route to be taken by Haywood was a spy. And late that night after the Major had departed, Gregory made his way furtively to the rear door of a neighboring embassy. There, in response to his knock on the door, a man appeared. Gregory spoke low and quickly as he handed an envelope to the man. This is for His Excellency. Tell him it is the information he wants. Tell him also that the Major has already started his journey. Very well. I'll hurry back now before I'm missed. Ferdinand Grosny, supposedly a writer for European papers, had spent months in the West. His map of speech and deportment were strange. The men of the trails and plains learned to accept him. It never occurred to them that there were foreign spies in that part of the country. By spending money freely, Grozny cultivated those who were known as bad men or who were suspected of being outlaws. Chief among these was Sam Belmore, in whom Grozny eventually confided. The renegade Belmore, who hated most men, was glad to enter the conspiracy with Grozny. When Grozny received the message from his embassy in Washington, he decoded and then read it. Finally, he spoke to Belmore. Sam, my friend, this information I have received is wonderful. Wonderful. Now I do not have to seek out the military information any longer. Instead, it's coming to me. Huh? That's right. Heading for Fort Manning at this minute is one Major Haywood, who is listed on the stagecoach passenger list as John Chester, traveling salesman. Well, how do you know? Oh, Sam, ours is a wonderful spy system. Gregory, who works for one of America's highest officials, has gathered the information. According to what I am told in this message... This is what the Major is doing. Grozny outlined the complete details of the supposed secret instructions given to Major John Haywood. Yes. He concluded. And this information about Army strength, plans of procedure, and all the rest are included in a packet which he carries in his baggage. Gee. And all you have to do is get it from him before he reaches Fort Manning, huh? Yeah, that's right. I myself have plans of the men and arms my country has hidden in certain places. Ready to move into this country when word is given. You have, huh? 
Where are they? I have them. That is all you need to know. When I get the information which the Major has for the officers at Fort Manning, well, the rest is easy. We'll act before the United States can do anything. Well, how are you going to go about getting it, huh? It may not be easy. It will be if you get your friends Slim Jarvis and Lucky Gordon and their bad men to help us. You want them? Certainly. They have held up stagecoaches in the past, I presume. <laughs> it's about all the work they ever did in their lives. And they will hold up the stagecoach on which the Major rides. They need not even know what it is they seek or why they seek it. Eh? Tell them there are there are jewels of great worth in the baggage of the man who is known as John Chester. They know they cannot dispose of jewels in country like this. But tell them I'll pay them in gold for getting these jewels. Tell them I will pay great sums of gold. And Slim, this hombre will pay you and your men a thousand dollars apiece for getting that bag. A thousand dollars apiece? Yeah. And you can take on as many men as you need. The more you have, the easier it'll be. He has the money too, Slim. I've seen it. Now, what do you say? Well, sounds good to me. What about you, Lucky? Uh, You're talking about a lot of money, Sam, when you mention a thousand dollars apiece for the men we use. You mean this hombre carries that sort of money on him? No, no, not on him. But I promise he'll get it for you in a hurry once you do the job. Well, if he doesn't pay us on the line, Lucky, we just refuse to turn over the bag to him. And that way we still have the jewels, right, Sam? Sure. But don't worry about the money part. And what's more, boys, if you do this job the way he likes it, There'll be others for you to do later. Good. Now, what about the fellow who's carrying the bag of jewels? The stagecoach he's riding will reach these parts sometime next week. Now, my friend Grosny's checking on that. I'll leave it up to you fellas to pick the spot for the whole... At that moment, many miles away, Tonto returned to the Lone Ranger's camp after a visit to the old mission. The masked man read the lengthy letter which had been addressed to him in care of the padre. When he finished reading... The Lone Ranger spoke to Tonto. Tonto is from the government. The information is important and grave. Oh? And what it say, Kimasabi? The most important part says we must try to see that no harm befalls a certain man before he reaches Fort Manning. But Fort Manning? A week's ride from here, Kimasabi. Yes, Tonto. However, we will try to catch up with the stagecoach on which he rides about four days from now. We ride with coach? No, no, Tonto. We'll stay in the background and try not to be noticed. Perhaps we'll not be needed at all. But how you be sure, Kimasabi? We'll pick up the coach at Vanita and stay close to it until we're sure it arrives safely at Fort Manning. Oh. If Major Haywood, he's the man we're to watch out for, if he needs help of any kind, he'll leave a message for us. How, Kimasabi? Well, he has a silver bullet. He'll leave that and his message at one of the relay stations along the way to be picked up by an Indian named Tonto. Are you ready to go, Tonto? Huh? Be ready, Kimasabi. He's just a living fellow. Then we'll start at once. We'll have to ride hard in order to reach Benito on time. All right, let's go. Come on, Come on, come When the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the town of Benita on the afternoon of the fourth day, Tonto returned from the stagecoach station with disturbing information. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Kimasabi, we late. I was afraid of that. The coach is gone. Ah, uh, it leave more than an hour ago. Well, there's a relay station about ten miles west of here. We'll catch up with the stagecoach by sundown. Let's go. Move on, move on, scout. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. 
Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say, She's feeling her Cheerios. to continue. At a point called High Rock, at the end of a bend in the road six miles to the west of Benita, a band of horsemen waited. They were the outlaw band gathered together by Slim Jarvis and Lucky Gordon after their talk with Sam Belmore. They had been waiting since high noon and were getting impatient. Suddenly, Slim Jarvis, who had watched from the highest point of the rock looking eastward, rode to where Lucky and the other men waited. Oh, boy. Pull your band up around your faces, boys, and get mounted. The stage is coming. How far away is the stage, Slim? Less than a mile. The boys know we want the bag marked Chester more than anything else on the coach, Lucky? Sure, they know. And they know which cave we're hiding out in till Belmore and that pal of his come with the money. Of course they do. Stop worrying. Now get ready. Here it comes, fellas. All right, men. Remember what we said. Once we've taken over, unhitch the horses on the coach and drive them away. Gotcha. Now there's only one hombre who'll need shooting. That's Chester. And I'll take care of him. But if anybody tries anything, kill him. Oh, yeah. All right, come on, start riding. Get up, get up, come on. had reached the turn in the road when the outlaws rode down from the high ground. The guard atop the coach hit by a bullet toppled across the driver's seat, sending the driver off balance. The coach careened crazily and the horses bolted. Animals and vehicles tottered and landed in a ditch at the side of the road. The passengers inside the coach had no chance to attempt defense. They were piled up crazily on the floor of the vehicle when the outlaws, led by Slim Jarvis, rode close to the window. Oh, 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 oh. All right, in there, crawl out. Don't try any funny stuff or we blow your heads off. That goes for all of you. Now, come on, get out. The dazed passengers, four men, emerged shakily from the wrecked stagecoach as part of the outlaw gang unhitched the horses from the coach and sent them galloping away. The vendors who were searching the baggage compartment stopped as one of them held up a bag and shouted... Here he is! Here's the bag, Mark John Chester. The only one in there. All right, give it to me. Here you are, Lucky. Never mind the names. Oh, yeah, this is it. Well, now, which one of you is John Chester? Speak up, which one of you is Chester? One of you four passengers is John Chester. Now, which one? Come oh, on, boys, we'll be in attack. Where are they? I don't see anybody. Oh. Hey, they shot two more men. There must be a lot of them. Go on, right. Yeah. We didn't get Chester like we were told. Come on, never mind him. I have the bag. That's what we want. Don't stay there, Slim. Come on. They're all right. I'll ride behind you. As Lucky and the other outlaws galloped uphill behind the giant rock and headed into the tree-studded hills, Slim Jarvis, his shoulder shattered, fell to the ground beside the four bandits who'd been wounded. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Toto galloped down from the rise on the opposite side of the road, where they had fired at the men they had seen robbing the stagecoach. Toto, don't attempt to chase those outlaws. Some of these people are hurt badly. We must help them. The four passengers, all of them dazed and bleeding, were helped to the side of the road. One of them, a man more conscious than the rest, suddenly regained full control of his senses. Uh, my, my bag. It's all they took, my bag. Whoever you are, go after them. They took a bag with... with oh, never mind, get them. Which one of you is John Chester? That's what they asked, too. I thought no one knew that... Do you have a silver bullet in your possession? What? Do you? Why, I... But yes. Yes, I have. You're masked, aren't you? And your horse is white, and you called your Indian friend Tonto. Yes, I have that bullet. It's in my inside pocket. Do, do you have the password? The Lone Ranger whispered a word which had been given as the word of identification by the official in Washington. Then, sure that the man to whom he talked was Major John Haywood, he worked fast treating the Major's wounds. Tonto had revived the stagecoach driver, and together they helped the other passengers. Tonto bandaged the guard while the Lone Ranger and Major Haywood went to where Slim Jarvis and the three crooks lay on the ground wounded. When the last man had stopped the flow of blood, he turned to Haywood. It's getting dark, and it may be difficult to follow the trail of the men who got away. But I must recover that bag. If you know what's in it... I do, I do. And I can understand why a gang of road agents would hold up a stagecoach in order to get it. I want to learn why they did. But we'll be wasting time. On the contrary, we may be saving time if we handle this right. 
Now, please remove the bandanas from the faces of those men. Oh, certainly. <laughs> there you are. Well, what do you know? I know who this one is. You're Slim Jarvis, aren't you? Never mind who I am. Help me. I, I'm hurt bad. Die if... I doubt that. <sighs> I'm going to act tough and see if it gets results. Do anything but get them. This one asked for John Chester. He knows something. Ask him. The Lone Ranger, affecting a callousness, when to his nature, concentrated on Slim Jarvis. Why did you hold up that coach? It wasn't for money, was it? Well, was it? I, I don't know. Please, I, I'm hurt bad. Not as badly as your country will be hurt after what you and your men did. Who told you to hold up that coach? Who? Tell me, and perhaps I'll try to help you. Don't tell me, I'll... I'll tell. We were after the jewel. What? Jewels? But you took my oh, bag you... and... The... You're John Chester. You see, they knew about me. Yes, I'm called John Chester. We wanted the jewels you have in your bag. We were going to be paid to, to get them. All right, you start talking. I'll tie up your arm while you do. The Lone Ranger treated Slim Jarvis and listened to the man's story. Major Haywood, known as John Chester, spoke when Slim finished. The man who told him you all about my errand and who I am. He's a spy. That's the only answer. And if a spy gets away with a pouch in my bag, we're lost. I see. Jarvis, you're an outlaw. I know that. So do you. But you're also an American. Would you sell your country, this whole great country, for a thousand dollars? What? What are you talking about? Of course I wouldn't. Well, that's what you've done. What? Oh, you're crazy. Major, the truth will be known soon enough, no matter what happens. It may as well come out now. Identify yourself to this man and tell him your mission. The time, important as it is, is our one big chance. Haywood, without going into deep details, told Slim Jarvis and the three other crooks, now bandaged, the purpose behind the holdup. And there were no jewels in my bag. Only military plans. Sam Belmore lied to you. He's working for enemies of this country. Dirty lion, no go- Major, Lucky and the rest of the boys are hiding in a cave a few miles from here. Belmore and this other hombre are coming there tonight to check on the bag before paying off. You see, Major, we've saved time by doing what we've done. Where is this cave, Slim? Tell us. You don't have to threaten me now, masked man. I'll lead you there. I'll get to the boys and tell them the story. I'm feeling stronger now. Help me up. Our horses are still here. You follow me and I'll lead you. While Slim Jarvis waited, the Lone Ranger, Toto, and the stage driver pulled the stagecoach from the ditch onto the road. Then the three wounded bandits who had been with Slim were bound securely and placed inside the coach. The driver said, I'll take them and the shotgun guard to the next relay station. The coach horses did run very far. There are four of them eating grass back there by the trees. Yeah, uh, Sure, I'll get them. Uh, you three passengers, if you feel up to it, help me. All right. Well, well. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Haywood rode the horse of one of the wounded bandits, and a strangely revitalized Slim led the way on his own horse. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode behind Jarvis. As they headed for the cave in the hills, their way was lit by the crimson rays of the setting sun. As they neared the hideout cave, a lookout, seeing the riders approaching in the early twilight, fired a warning shot. Slim Jarvis shouted, Hold your fire! Oh, 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 oh. It's me, Slim! Hold it a half pound with me! Slim Jarvis led his companions into the cave and told the suspicious outlaws what he had learned. Some wanted to draw guns on the masked man and the others, but Slim prevailed. He had Major Haywood open the bag. The Major did and revealed the contents. You see, there are no jewels. Whatever money you were to receive is in payment for stealing your country's defense plans for the West. That's what's in this pack. And that snake, Sam Belmore, told me to make sure you were killed. We were going to kill you, too, until we decided... Comes two men on horses heading up here. It's Belmore and Grasny. Well, men, what do you say? We can't promise to let you escape punishment for what you did today. But if we speak to authorities... Never mind I... that part. This is war, stranger, not a holdup. We change sides, that's all. Yeah, and maybe we'll stay on the right side after this deal. Hey, Slim. Lucky. That's Sam, all right. Get your guns ready, boys. We're going to give these two a reception. Slim, answer. It's all right, Sam. Come on in. Bring your pal with you. You get what I told you to get. Hey, who are these men? Yeah. Okay. Major Haywood. Suppose you tell him. Major Haywood? Sam, he's alive. Shoot him. Don't reach for that gun, Belmore. You're covered. Yeah, and by all of us. Now step right up, you snakes. 
You're riding with us to Fort Manning. With you? To Fort Manning? Yeah. Right, boys? Yeah. Right. What is this? What are you doing to me? You'll find out soon enough, Grosny. Now get more. No, 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 no. At the fort, Ferdinand Grosny was questioned and then searched. Major Haywood found a pouch hidden in the folds of the spy's coat. Inside the pouch were papers which the army officers studied. There was a look of unbelief on Haywood's face when they'd finished. Why, this tells us the names and locations of all the foreign agents in this part of the country and in Washington. I must notify my superiors in Washington at once and tell them that Gregory is a spy. Well, uh, what about us, Major? What are you going to do with Lucky and me and the rest of the gang? You'll be tried, Slim, and you'll be punished. But the punishment may not be great in view of what you did today. Well, uh, that's up to you, Major. But the masked man proved to me that he... Hey, where is the masked man? He and the engine walked off a couple of minutes ago. Well, I'll be doggone. You hear that, Major? The masked man's the one who shot us up and saved your life by doing it. He's the one I know everything he's done. For me and his country. The world will hear of what that masked man did today. Because he saved more than a few lives, including my own. I'm ready to make a report that the West was saved by the Lone Ranger. I don't... Champions are made, not bought. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It gives you a swell feeling to know that champions are made, not born. Roy Campanella, sensational catcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers, is an example. Sandlot grade school legion ball, as a lad, Roy played them all. Learned to hit, to catch, to throw. And something else the champs all know. A Wheaties breakfast gave him go. Now that Roy's well on his way, it's Wheaties still most every day. Twenty years. That's how long Roy's been sparking up with Wheaties. He picked a winner. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Look out, pitcher. Roy's at bat. Hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>